So my name is uh, Veronique Roger. Uh, I'm a, a cardiologist and epidemiologist at Mayo Clinic. And uh, I will be speaking of uh, our paper, which is published uh, recently in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings, entitled Skilled Nursing Facility Use and Hospitalization in Heart Failure, a Community Linkage Study. So in that particular study, uh, our team uh, aimed at really characterizing the complete experience of patients living with heart failure in our community from the diagnosis of the disease all the way uh, to the point when they reach end of life. And the uh, particularly uh, um, original, if you will, piece of that work is that we uh, were interested in not only looking at their experience in the outpatient setting or in the hospital, but also in skilled nursing facilities. And so in order to do that, we had to actually be able to link our medical record data with data from skilled nursing facilities in the community and be able to look at the outcome of these patients over an extended period of time. So it's really the linkage part uh, of that paper that enabled us to understand what happens to those patients once they get transferred to a skilled nursing facility. Now, as a clinician, I'm among the uh, practitioners here at Mayo Clinic that refer patients to skilled nursing facilities. And when we do that, we have certain uh, understandings uh, mentally of what happens to those patients and how they do in skilled nursing facilities, but we uh, seldom have complete visibility on these outcomes. And so, in terms of the results, uh, what this paper showed is that in the community uh, of Olmsted County, Minnesota, which is where the Mayo Clinic Rochester uh, resides, uh, a lot of patients who are living with heart failure get admitted to a skin, skilled nursing facility during the course of their life. And once they are admitted to a skilled nursing facility, they stay there quite some time. The average length of stay was 144 days, which is quite long. And so this, as a physician, made me think that when I tell those patients it's going to be for a short while uh, until you can get back uh, on your feet and go back home, uh, you know, the intent is there, but the reality is that those patients say, stay in those facilities for quite some time. So it's important that we keep that in mind. The second piece is that these patients, once they've been in a skilled nursing facility, are often readmitted again and again to a skilled nursing facility, which is not what the most, in most cases the patient and his or her family wishes for, and it's certainly not um, you know, the optimal use, if you will, of our resources. So we then got interested in saying, well, what could we do? Are there any risk factors to be readmitted to skilled nursing facilities that we uh, could work with as practitioners to help improve? And there's some things that we can't do a whole lot about uh, in terms of um, the predictors of getting into a skilled nursing facility. And that includes older age, we can all understand that, uh, a certain number of other conditions that travel with heart failure, such as lung disease and other conditions. So these are things that, as we all get older, we acquire more comorbidities, as we call them, and certainly uh, once they're uh, there, we have to manage them and live with them more so than it's seldom the case that we can actually completely cure them. But the one interesting feature of what we looked at is that we're also able to uh, measure the activities of daily living among these patients as they get into the nursing home. And what we found into the skilled nursing facility, and so what we found is that the level of activity that a patient has when he or she enters a skilled nursing facility is a very important predictor of whether or not they will be readmitted and how they will do in the long term. So really, the mobility of a patient, the ability of a patient to carry on activities of daily living is really a very important piece of the assessment for a physician to sort of look into those things to be able to gauge the ability of the patient to potentially return back home. And then the interesting thing about that is that um, it's potentially something we could intervene upon. It is possible to envision that with uh, an increased emphasis on physical therapy, perhaps in skilled nursing homes, in skilled nursing facilities, if resources allow it, or even ideally way before that, when we're in the, our middle age years, if you will, to really focus on physical activity and exercise to maintain muscle mass and to maintain the ability of carrying on activities of daily living without any assistance because that is a very important predictor of the ability to live autonomously and reduce 
the, the uh, years and ye days spent in skilled nursing facilities. The uh, um, patients who live with heart failure also live with a number of other diseases which we call comorbidities. And in some cases, they also, as part of that picture, have a reduction in their activities of daily living. So it's important to maintain those and do whatever we can to, to maintain autonomy and physical activity and, and muscle mass. But it's also important for the clinicians who care for patients with heart failure to understand the importance of these other medical conditions that travel with heart failure uh, in terms of their impact on the outcomes. And so uh, as a cardiologist, obviously, I, I will focus in my practice on the cardiovascular system, the heart and the vessels. But it's really important that we keep in mind the big picture and that we're treating not only the heart or the cardiovascular system, but treating the whole patient and that we need to pay attention to these other comorbid conditions in the way we manage those patients, both in skilled nursing facilities and outside of skilled nursing facilities. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.